hi hello and welcome guys to, uh, to another session based on geotechnics uh, so in this video we will be discussing about very few uh, sections uh, basically i wanted to discuss about cu test and uh, the long term and short term stability of uh, soil uh, most of the previous other questions are discussed already in the other two videos i'll leave a link in the description okay let's uh, move on to the first question right so today we'll be seeing a CU test question from 2017-18 paper, right? So basically the question starts like this, right here, right? So a consolidated undrained triaxial test with pore pressure measurements are widely used to determine the shear strength parameters of soil in terms of effective stress, right? So draw the st uh, stress condition of soil is subjected to inside the triaxial cell during the initial condition when only all round cell pressure is acting on the sample, right? So in the A part, we are asked to draw the stress condition of the sample before the axial load, right? In the B part, uh, a vertical axial stress of sigma axial is applied on the uh, case of a loading test, draw the stress condition, uh, the soil sample is subjected to now and determine the relationship between sigma one, sigma three and sigma axial, right? So we'll do both the parts together, right? So I'll quickly move to the whiteboard. Okay, uh, in the first part, so if we take the soil sample, right? The cell pressure will be acting all around the sample, isn't it? So since the cell is entirely covered with water, in this case here, here sigma three is equal to sigma C, right? So it is entirely covered with water so the sample gets this pressure right so what this is before loading before axial load right so once the axial load is applied to this right see already there is a sigma 3 and in the lateral section there is sigma 3 right so here also sigma 3 right so in the in this direction, you will get an additional load of sigma axial loads, right? So here also sigma three plus sigma axial, right? So this is equal to sigma one. So that is the entire major principle stress acting on that. So this is after axial load, right? So from this relationship, we can get that is sigma one minus sigma three is sigma axial. So this is sigma one minus sigma three is known as the deviatory stress, right? So this is fairly simple theory from our soil mechanics syllabus, right? So the next part, uh, C part. Explain why CU test with pore pressure measurements is widely used for all consolidated drain uh, and used over consolidated drain test. So they're asking why CU is mostly used than CD test to, uh, to determine the effective strength parameters. So obviously in CD test, it is a drained test. So we are releasing the pore water pressure by allowing drainage, the pore water pressure would be released and at the end, it will become, uh, there won't be a reading, the entire pore water pressure will be dissipated due to the consolidation, right? So we can't find what was the pore water pressure which was developed within the soil. So in that case, defining the effective strength parameters would be difficult. So we are using CU test mostly, right? So the next part, right? So results of three consolidated undrained tests on identical specimens of a particular soil are given, right? So determine C dash and phi dash of the tested soil. So we want to find the effective strength parameters and certain values are given to us, right? So we'll quickly note down this in the board and do the, uh, we'll see how to do this question, right? 
So here, so it is given to us that there are three cases, right? So test one, two, and three, right? Cell pressures are given. So sigma three is given to us as 200, 300, and 400. The deviatory stress is given. That is sigma one minus sigma three is given. So this is 244 and here it is 314 and here it is 384 right and the pore pressures are given so u is given so u is 55 so it's 107 and 159 so here you have to find sigma 3 dash so what is sigma 3 dash that is sigma 3 minus u so you have to simply calculate those values so if you cal if you calculate quickly we'll get uh, 145 so here it's 290, sorry, 193, and here it is 241, right? So what is sigma one? So first you have to calculate sigma one. So what sigma one is sigma one minus the divitoric stress plus your cell pressure sigma three. So you have to just addition. So here it is 444, here 614, here 784. Right. So sigma one dash, sigma one dash, right? That is sigma one minus u. Sigma one dash. Right. So you have to subtract fifty-five. Right. So here if we subtract fifty-five, so let me quickly do the subtraction. Right. It's uh, three hundred and eighty-nine. So here, if we subtract 107, it is 507. And at the last, if we subtract 159, it's 625, right? So now we have to draw the Mohr circle using these parameters because the question is C dash and phi dash. So we have to draw the Mohr circle for the effective strength parameters, right? So here I am not going to draw it to the scale. You can either use two method. You can use your uh, actual scale method or you can go with calculation, right? So for the scale method, you need your graph sheet and select a proper scale and draw this, right? So for the time being, I am drawing it. We'll do it with calculation. So this is one circle. So assume that both are touching. The dash line is your fairly enveloped, right? So the next one would be something like this. And the last one would be, right? Some yeah, like this, right? So the first circle's value, if you see, one is 145, and the other value is 389, right? For the second circle, it is 193, and the other value is 507. For the third circle, if you see, the value is 241 and 625, right? So if you further extend this, and if you take this line, you can see this is our phi dash, and this intercept is our c dash. So we have to find this phi dash and c dash, right? From the center of the circle, right? So in this figure, it's a bit difficult to figure out, right? Right, from the, let's take the center of the circle in this blue dot and we can draw this. So this is the radius of the smaller circle. Let's take R1. Similarly, you can take the center of this circle and you can draw a radius. So this is R2, right? And let's take this length as x. We don't know what is that length, right? Uh, so and now you can consider that this sine phi value, right? So sine phi for the smaller triangle, if you take the smaller triangle, let's mark the coordinate of the center as c1 and this one as c2, right? So it's not c squared, it is c2. Right? So we can write sine phi dash is equal to r1 over x plus c1. Similarly, r2 over x plus c2, isn't it? 
so now instead of r1 you can write half times right 389 minus 145 over right x plus instead of uh, sorry here c would be confusing isn't it so i'll change it to o1 and o2 right? so here o1 and o2 right instead of o1 that is center one you can write half times 389 plus 145 right then here it is again half times for the second medium circle so 507 minus 193 the radius and so here again x plus half times 507 plus 193 right so solving this you can find x right so the x would be 22.314 kilopascal right so once you know x, you can substitute x in this equation or in this equation and you can find sine phi dash. So phi dash would be right, it's nearly for 24 degree and 56 seconds. So you know phi dash and you know uh, x. So c dash is equal to x times tan phi. Simple trigonometry. trigonometry. So c dash would be right, 10.374 kilopascal. So fairly simple calculation, right? So no need to bother much, right? If you want to draw in the scale, uh, please use a graph sheet and draw it to the scale, right? And you can measure these results with your protector and the ruler and convert it to the original values and you can give the answer, right? So that's it for that part, right? And the last part in that. A different specimen of the same soil is subjected to the same test at a cell pressure of 100. Uh, and fails with a deviatory stress of 174.1. Determine the pore pressure in the specimen, right? So they're asking us to determine the pore pressure, right? Okay, uh, we'll see. So here they have said the same soil. So the effective strength parameters, the C5 value, they do not change, right? So we have to do with the same values, right? So they told us the new cell pressure, right? New cell pressure is sigma three is hundred, right? Sigma three is hundred. The deviatoric stress sigma one minus sigma three. So this is given to us as one hundred and seventy four point one kilopascals, right? And uh, the answer is they, they are asking us the pore water pressure, right? You is the question. So you know. Sigma one uh, dash, right? Sigma one dash is equal to sigma one minus u. You can find sigma one from these two equations, right? So sigma one would be two hundred and seventy four point one kilopascal, right? So sigma one dash is two hundred and seventy four point one minus u, and sigma three dash is equal to hundred minus you so from these two you can find sigma one minus sigma three dash is again 174.1 right so again you can use the same plot right you can draw in the same plot and you can use this sine phi relationship again right so the sine phi dash right gives you half times so about the numerator portion is the radius so that is sigma 1 dash minus sigma 3 dash over x plus half times sigma 1 dash plus sigma 3 dash right so if you si substitute the values so you know sine phi dash right phi dash is 24 and uh, 56 right so sine 24 degrees 56 seconds equal half times sigma 1 dash minus sigma 3 dash is 174.1 over you know x 
x is 22.314 plus half times what is sigma 1 dash plus sigma 3 dash sum of these two values right so that is 374.1 minus 2u so if you see in this entire equation u is the only unknown term right so if you solve this u is approximately 3.084 kilopascal right for water pressure so that is the part right it's a fairly simple calculation right so there is a similar question uh, in one of the previous years also i'll just show the question so i think you can uh, work out that part so there's another question in 2010 11 paper right so it's a fairly simple question right the same idea it's a cu question right the, the another thing which i wanted to point out here is uh this is a question which came from uh, level four students uh, most of the students are asking why uh, when it comes to cu test why the effective stress uh, circle is always to the right of the total stress circles right so that is not always the case so that means most of the people are asking when there is a shearing phase or uh, in CU, if it is CU test, it is always the pore water pressure is negative. So this is the argument, right? So this is not the case always, right? This won't happen always, right? So that depends on the soil type, right? Sometimes if the soil compresses, there will be a positive uh, pore water pressure. And if there is a dilation, there might be a negative pore water pressure developed within the soil, right? So you can't, say with a precise manner that if it is a CU test, definitely uh, the more circle will be to the right, that, that in the case, the pore water pressure would be negative. That is not the case, right? So that depends on the soil type, right? So you have to be careful when that there's a misunderstanding. So especially uh, young, uh, the level four people who are asking this. So I just wanted to point out here if someone had the same uh, issue right so that's it uh, in this uh, port uh, sorry cu test part so another thing i wanted to discuss was the st stress failure right the long term and short term failure thing so that is a part here right in question number six right so I think the A part and B part are both are based on artificial consolidation things, right? Uh, so those are fairly theory, the A part and the B part is based on the chart, right? Uh, the C part, I have already explained spring analogy in one of my previous videos. I'll leave a link uh, and a card also, right? And the last parts, right? I wanted to discuss this last part, right? So when it comes to loading, of uh, NC clay and uh, OC clays, or the loose sand and dense sand, right? Uh, we have particular stress paths, right? So when it comes to that, we'll quickly draw the stress path and I'll quickly talk through it, right? Uh, give me a second, right? So for NC clays, right? So if we, if we take the PQ plot, Right, so this is the stress path, right? For the PQ plot, we have our Fehli envelope, right? So this is our Fehli envelopes. So we know for here, uh, the C cos phi value is zero. Since C is zero, the C cos phi value is zero, the gradient is sine phi dash, right? So this is PQ plot. So here, the effective stress path, it starts something from a horizontal line, right? And it moves up to a certain point and eventually the total stress path would be something like this at a 45 degree angle, right? And the effective stress path is something like this. So this would be our pore water dissipation value. This is our U. Right? 
So this, this path is the TSP, total stress path. This is the ESP, right? Effective stress path, right? So you know from the spring analogy and all, right? When you apply a load to a soil, right? When you apply, so this is fine, see clear, right? When I apply load, right? Immediately, right? Immediate load is given to water, right? So soil experiences, so soil gets effective loads, right? Because part of the load is carried by water, right? So soil gets the effective load, right? Or the effective stress, right? So it would be precise if we say effective stress, right? So by time being, right? So if you, if you allow some time for drainage, slowly, Right? What happens? Right? So the arrow marked here. Slowly, the pore water dissipates and the soil experiences the entire force and it moves to total stress path. Right? So you can see once the load is applied, immediately the soil gets effective stress. And as time goes on, by years and years, right? Not by days, right? It, it might take years, right? According to the soil type. Uh, for the long term, it will move to TSP path. So if you see the ESP and TSP paths, the effective stress and uh, total stress path, you can absolutely see that effective stress path, the point A, it reaches the failure envelope first and later the point B will reach. So in this case, you know, effective stress is more critical. So if effective stress is more critical, right? You can get understand that the short term loading becomes critical, right? So in NC class, short term loading is critical, right? So if you in short term, you know there won't be any drainage, so no drainage is allowed. Right? So if you want to study the soil parameters here. So you, we need to perform a test, something like CU test, right? We need the effective strength parameters. So we need to perform some tests like CU test to find the effective strength parameters, right? So later, after some time or years, the total stress path will also eventually reach the fa failure and fill up, not, not as quick as uh, the uh, effective stress path. Total stress path takes more time. time. So long term is not that critical, right? So when it comes to uh, OC class, right? Here it is a bit different, right? So when it comes to OC class, again you will be having a failure envelope, but this time we will be having an intercept, right? So this is sine phi dash, and here this is c dash cos phi dash, right? And we will be having a total stress path, right? Again, in so here we start from horizontal, and when it starts moving up, it will be at a 45 degree angle, right? And here there will be a effective stress path, something like this. So this is our ESP, this is our TSP, right? So once you see if you extend this path, both are reaching the fairly end wheel up. Uh, within a short time, right? So not, you can't say that this, within these two things, there might be years, but still those years are not that long, right? So it is a short gap. So here in this case, right, both the things are critical, right? The most, if you compare these two, total stress path is much more critical, right? But you can't, in that case, avoid the effective stress path also because it is also closing as soon as possible, right? So we have to analyze both the things. So for total stress path, you can do something like CD test. And for effective stress parameters, you can do CU test. If you do CU test, that is enough because we can find most C5 and C dash phi dash, both from this and out of both these things, we have to find which is more critical and do the uh, designing process according to that, right? 
so that is the part when it comes to do the analysis thing you have to remember which is which which is more critical right which reaches the uh, failure and will up quickly so that person is the danger man right uh, failure and will up right so these are the two things which i wanted to discuss precisely here other than that when it comes to 2017 18 paper the last year paper most of the questions we have already discussed in our previous videos i'll be leaving a link and when it comes to 2017 16 17 paper or again we have discussed most of the questions and some questions i have already discussed in my soil and mechanics q and a so i'll leave a link for that also uh, and uh, so when it comes to another paper i selected was 2010 and 11 so here also most of the questions we have discussed and this consolidation question and all the question number 4 uh, this is in my q and a part right uh, so that is the thing i wanted to mention to you all and good luck for the exam uh, hope to meet you all quickly in another video bye bye